So, you know when you see something and you think it's funny and you think it'll make a great game? Well, I had one of those thoughts and I made a little mock-up. And then I showed it to Joseph. So now we're making a game about a cat throwing shit off a table and you have to puzzle it back together. Ta-da! It's going to be a puzzle game where you can rotate pieces and fuse them back together. It's basically cats organized neatly all over again, just with faces. Now we just need to work on finding the game's identity because First, it just started out as a stupid meme game. Haha, <laughs> cats are funny. I made this mock-up level in Photoshop with a vase just scattered into like 30 pieces. And I played it, Joseph played it, and we both really liked it. It was very relaxing. So now we have cat chaos energy on the one hand and then relaxing puzzle on the other hand. And we need to merge them somehow. And we've done that before for cats organized neatly. But I think it was easier because the cats were the puzzle shapes. Right now we have like a really rudimentary prototype. We've talked to our sound designer Miku who's done music for all of our games. So what, shall I start working on that as soon as possible or...? The next steps are going to be making a scene page, finding the game's identity, and like getting everything set up. So, uh... But Simone, you didn't even mention what software you're using. Well, same software we use for most of our games. Game Maker, who were kind enough to sponsor this video. And I am so glad that Game Maker is my first sponsor because I use Game Maker almost every day. And as someone with not really a traditional coding background, I really appreciate how easy GameMaker language is to understand. Our programmer Yuzia can code the most crazy sh**, but I can still click on the script, scroll through it and understand what it does and maybe even sometimes make modifications to it. GameMaker also comes with some really artist-friendly tools like sequences, which one of you guys made me aware of. And I still cannot believe how overpowered sequences are, like seriously. If you are curious and you haven't tried out GameMaker, there is a download link for it in my description. As a bonus, I've even linked three of my favorite GameMaker tutorials. One of them is made by Yuzia, because he's a GameMaker genius. Now let's get back to the prototype and actually make some progress. At this point, the prototype really only has one level, but we wanted to test the tech of fusing the puzzle pieces together and also see how the graphics, especially the cuts, would look in Game Maker. Furthermore, in this prototype, we have variables for rotation angle, rotation speed, and so on. So we can just do some tests and tweaks to see what feels nice for puzzling. The next step was to write down more instructions for our programmer Yuzia, so we could get more features like a start screen, level selection and level transition in. So good morning. Um, overnight we've gotten the new prototype from Yuzia and we can now um, build levels. I'm still very tired. So, the base loop works. We have a very bare level menu, but the cool thing is we can duplicate sprites and rename them and it automatically adds a new level. Cool. So, in theory, we could make all the levels now. We've already done two tests. Um, for the first one, we cut the pieces up in Photoshop and that looked okay. And then we also cut them up in Affinity Designer and that gives us really big gaps. The third option that we wanna try is making the pieces in double the size, cutting them up and then scaling them down again to like kind of reduce those gaps. The only thing that we need before that is our final art style. 
I took the first design from the prototype and just tried to see how it would look without outlines, but it was really hard to get it to work. So I tried a bunch of like shadows, outlines, no outlines, different colors, and just a bunch of different variations on how to draw vases. However, I wasn't really satisfied with how any of these were looking, so I thought it might be the design of the vase that is limiting me. So I sat down to just draw a bunch of different vase designs so that I could then take those and stylize them. Yesterday evening, I managed to knock out two concepts for two items, a little tea or coffee cup, and the other one, a vase. Today, we spent some time building those assets in Affinity and kind of figuring out our workflow of like, who's gonna do what. We now have the coffee cup in game. It's split into three pieces. You can piece it together. It looks really nice. And I think Joseph's been spending the past hour uh, cutting up the vase because he wants to make it like really intricate and detailed just so we can see like what a more difficult puzzle would look like. That's where we at. And... Okay, so it is day four of working on the new prototype. We have two issues at the moment with the game. First one, some puzzle pieces, when they generate, they get rotated randomly and they get yeeted off the play field. <laughs> In each of our cases, one piece at least was missing, which sucked. And the second problem that we have is making the puzzle and saving out the parts took Joseph, I think about two hours. If we wanna make 50 puzzles, that's just not feasible. Cutting the pieces up in Affinity Designer, which is vector-based compared to Affinity Photo and Photoshop. Um, Affinity Designer gives us the best results with how the cuts look. However, Affinity Designer has no way of saving out the puzzle pieces in the way that we need it. Today is probably going to be a very boring day where we just try and figure out how to make these cuts look nice. Then importing those in Game Maker and then seeing how that looks. We also still need to work on the anti-aliasing um, because I think that also has a big influence on how the puzzle pieces look. Um, but then once we have that, we're pretty much done with the art style. At the end of the day, we settled on the following. Generating the cuts and the file in Affinity Designer, exporting it as a PSD file, opening it in Photoshop, and then using Photoshop's batch processing to save out all of the puzzle pieces exactly the way that we need them. Good morning. We're gonna grab lunch now with our friends at Nemantic, and all we did this morning was trying to figure out how to name this stupid game. So much Mitzi, so much no. According to ChatGPT, which Joseph and Patrick both consulted, of course, Mitzi No is written with a comma, which I don't want in my logo. We also don't know how the Steam search engine treats commas and exclamation marks. While those two are trying to figure out the title for the Steam page, um, I'm gonna be doing a logo, like a placeholder logo for the game, um, and also a really, really rough menu, because at the end of today, I wanna have dummy graphics for the start menu and the options menu, so Yuzia can make it like semi-functional. For UI, I usually start by finding a font, but I was still struggling so much with finding the game's identity. Like, is it more chaos and funny, or is it more chill and aesthetic? 
To get some progress made, I decided to just use a generic font and also slap together a very generic logo. Which, seeing it now, I kind of like it, but in the moment I remember not being very happy with it. I also somehow needed to show that the title is spoken, so I put the Mitzi No in a shout bubble. But then like the shape just looked weird and ah, uh, you can see me trying to add color here to somehow save it, but it's just not coming together. And I wanted to include this in a video because I usually just show how I make finished art, but this is the reality of it. Like sometimes I just waste half a day by struggling and then not being happy. So in this case, in the end, I just settled for a super generic layout with a logo at the top, three buttons to the side and a cat illustration on the left. This is all just placeholder after all. Next, I saved out the graphics and implemented them into GameMaker. And with this, I can hand off the project to Yuzia so he can hook up the functionality to all of the graphics. So today is going to be the final day of us working on the prototype and working on the Steam page. And what we need for the Steam page is five screenshots, which we're just gonna do in Photoshop and Affinity Designer, so we're just gonna do mockups. Second thing we need is shop graphics, which we're also gonna do mockups. And then lastly, we need text, um, which we're probably just gonna do like placeholder text until we figure out the identity of the game a little more. Uh, yeah, let's work on these things. Sketching the remaining items was a lot of fun. I started out with a jar, which we have in real life, and it was a super fun challenge to recreate the item while adhering to the style guidelines I had set two days prior. And I think it came out pretty nice. The second item I drew was a bowl, which we also have in real life. And I thought the colorful pattern would make for a really cool puzzle. The last item we don't have in real life, but I wish we had it. You can see a lot of references on my second monitor and I wanted to make a picture with funky flowers on it, but they looked like eggs. So I just leaned into that and colored them in white and yellow. I finished the three items, I sent them over to Joseph and he's currently vectorizing them in Affinity Designer. Right now I am working on a placeholder graphic for the Steam page. My idea is to have like a smug cat face that is like right in the middle of like pushing a vase off a table. So I started out by sketching my idea and testing it out and it wasn't really working very well. So my second iteration, I just took the cat face and pushed it up against the vase. I needed them closer together in order to fit them on all the different layouts that we need for Steam. Once I was happy with the cat and the vase and like where everything was placed, it was time for color. A friend of mine suggested to make the cat orange because orange cats are known for causing chaos, but it just wasn't coming together. Putting these three color variations next to one another, one can definitely see that the blue, pink, beige one has the best contrast. I'm also very happy that I found a color palette which distinguishes us from a little to the left because the more I play that game, I realize how similar a lot of the ideas that we have are. We had this idea before I started playing a little to the left, but like I'm currently playing it and I'm like, oh fuck. They literally have a cat paw that comes in and like bashes your progress away. Why? <laughs> So yeah, currently processing that, it's not going well. <laughs> right now I'm finished with the sketch and I really like how it turned out. So I'm gonna take a break for now and then in the afternoon I'm gonna come back and clean it up and then put it into all of the different formats to see yeah, how it translates.
By the time the cat graphic was done, Joseph had vectorized the three items for me and it was time to add some texture. If you're interested, I can show this process in more detail in the next devlog, but for now just know that what I'm doing is changing the items from flat colors to, uh, yeah, this. <laughs> I am so happy with how the items came out and now I just need to save them out as screenshots and upload them to Steam. And with that, our Steam page is finished. And yeah, this is what it looks like. We actually got it done. The cool thing of having the Steam page already up is that you can go to it, look at it, wishlist the game, hint, hint. I hope you enjoyed this first Mitzi No devlog. I'm trying to make these way shorter and hopefully a bit more focused. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments so I can talk about them more in the upcoming devlogs. Yeah, thanks so much for watching and bye bye!